Good evening and welcome to St Andrew's Facebook homepage for our evening prayer this evening, Monday the 8th of June. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to be reading from Psalm chapter 4 and Romans chapter 4 verses 1 to 12 this evening. So if you have a Bible, uh, we're going to use the NIV for our Romans reading and uh, you might want to follow it in your Bibles and uh, share in the uh, recanting or um, telling of the psalm as well, whichever, however technical you want to be. Um, we're going to be using the Worship at Home um, leaflet and uh, order of service this evening, so if you'd like to get that as well like I will, because I've just left it over there, then we'll uh, begin. So uh, I hope for you today has been uh, a good day. Um, I don't know how you felt about the weather, but I woke up this morning and for a lot of this morning really couldn't tell whether it was June or September already and we just missed summer whilst we were inside and only experienced it you know, for a few short days in the gardens. But uh, uh, it looks like it's brightened up now and it's a very clear sky and... Um, knowing that God can regenerate us and refresh us overnight as well as during the day. I hope that uh, our time together now will be a time when we can just reflect and come to God and rest in him to be renewed for the rest of the week. So uh, let's just turn to the worship at home and start our night prayer with the words from Deuteronomy which say, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, and together we say who made heaven and earth. Let's just uh, pause and spend a, a few moments reflecting on today, the good things, the not so good things, the things that have been called to our heart for prayer during the day and the people who come to your mind now. Let's just reflect on the day that we've had and the day the Lord has given us. I don't know if you can hear the bird song where you are, but I can hear the birds tweeting as the evening draws in where I am here. And I ask the Lord during this time to make our hearts sing just in open recognition of all that you do for us. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We're going to turn to Psalm uh, 4, and uh, as we've done regularly, um, we're going to say it in alternate verses together. So I'll say all the odd verses, and then if you'd like to join me in the even verses, that would be great. So, Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you nobles dishonour my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? 
but know that the Lord has shown me his marvellous kindness. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For it is you, Lord, only who makes me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We're going to turn to Romans chapter 4. Um, and this is uh, a passage that Paul wrote um, to describe what he saw as some of the challenges between how people were seeing the Jews who were carrying God's message through thousands of years and the new people coming to coming to God, coming to faith through Christ. <clears throat> Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. David says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. And he received circumcision as a sign, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then, he is the father of all who believe but have not been circumcised in order that righteousness might be credited to them. And he is then also the father of the circumcised who not only are circumcised but also follow in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. So, I don't know about you, but... So often we think it's what we do that counts and brings us to God. We come to faith, we work hard at our faith, we strive to find out what it means to be a Christian. And that's important. But I always thought, for a long time as an early Christian, that the Jews were brought to God through their faith and through the works that they did and the way the Old Testament talks about that. And Abraham, you know, as the father of, of the Jewish nation, um, was a key in that. And it was only when I first read this passage in Romans that I realised that actually what made Abraham 
father the Jewish nation and begin that journey of faith through the Old Testament was belief, not works. It was his faith in believing and seeing what God had done for him and then his wife Sarah that allowed God to take him, to make him righteous and to give him the purpose that God had ordained for him. An amazing sentence struck me in one of our online services a week or so ago and that was it's not about understanding to believe but it's about believing to understand and I think that's a really powerful thing for us today we can spend our whole lives and still not understand and struggle to believe as a result or we can just choose to believe and rest on God and rest on his spirit working in us to understand. And when we do that, maybe then we get that inner peace in a way that we might not have experienced before and can say in the last sentence, like in the last sentence of the verse the last verse rather of the psalm we've just read that it is you lord only who makes me dwell in safety we're going to turn to a time of prayer and um, i'm going to use the collect for today um, which i think is quite apt to what we've just been talking about and then we'll lead into a time of of prayer 